can the person communicate? I used to ask the college students I taught, what's a key to a good marriage? They would also almost always say communication. An interesting answer. I wasn't always sure what they meant by it. Did they mean something like the person's a good listener? They mean the person's articulate? Or they mean the person is knowledgeable and smart enough to have something to say worth saying? I was really struck by the fact they never said something like godliness or hard work. The person's a good communicator. Well, here's a hint. We have public figures that are very good communicators, but they're disasters in their marriages. I think of a president who was in the very early years uh, of my childhood assassinated in 1963 John F. Kennedy. Tremendous communicator, but a philanderer. So communication is not exactly the key or the only key to a good marriage. We're talking about Luke chapter 16 and verse 18 where Jesus said, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Just a note, I didn't say it. Jesus did. I'm the messenger. So we've talked about qualities a wife should have, someone a godly person would want to marry and want to stay married to. We talked about qualities a husband should have, someone would want to marry this guy and stay married to this guy, mostly from the book of Proverbs. That's the traditional wisdom they would have known in the villages where Jesus was traveling. But let's ask about marriage customs in Jesus' day. Let me mention five things. Here's the first. There was a dowry. Money or animals or land had to be given to the family who was going to bring the daughter to the marriage. In other words, a financial investment on the part of the groom's family. That dowry might have included something known as the bride price. They're losing, after all, a person who works hard and works for the family, so they're compensated. In other words, it was a financial investment. Here's a second thing about marriage in Jesus' day, that they didn't trust the young couple to decide well for themselves. Cousins, family, parents, they all got involved, though commonly there was consultation. But they didn't assume that a person with hot blood and another person with hot blood would be able to make a good choice. We got married in a fever hotter than a pepper sprout. They would have thought that's crazy. So there was a dowry or bride price. They wouldn't have thought the young people themselves on their own were wise enough to make a good choice. Here's a third thing about marriage in Jesus' day. There were community structures and strictures. If you are newly married, you want to get out of the house, where are you going to go? You're in a Galilean village. You can't go out to a bar. There is no such thing. Your life is with your home and with your family, and you stay home and you stay with your family. There were structures and strictures. Here's the fourth thing about marriage in Jesus' day. Everyone's watching someone's behavior. There's really no privacy in a Galilean village. Everyone from the family you've built another room on to live in to the neighbors who are right next door. Everyone knows what's going on. What we think of as privacy, well, they really didn't have any. Here's the fifth thing about marriage in Jesus' day. Mostly only the rich could divorce. Herod had a number of wives he divorced. He could afford to. He could afford to give back the dowry or bride price. He could afford to pay something to the family or settle the estranged wife in a palace somewhere. The average villager simply couldn't afford it. Couldn't afford a marriage that went on the rocks. They had reason to keep it from going on the rocks. So when Jesus says whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery, and whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, he's talking to a village that was prepared to sustain a marriage, and a couple prepared to sustain a marriage. In other words, they prepped for it. Wait a second. A person prepares for a job. A person prepares for retirement. A person prepares maybe to have a measure of health. Why not prepare for marriage? That's what they would have done, but they would have assumed that the village helped the married couple stay married. And they would have limited their choices because sometimes people can make foolish ones and suffer the consequences. Years ago, someone said to me that when you join two people, it's like joining two pieces of paper and gluing them together. Pretty hard to tear them apart without shredding, 
both or tearing both. Better to stay married. But that involves some other things in the Bible. Let's talk about them tomorrow. So this is your daily devotional for Friday. I hope you're doing well. hope you'll seek first the kingdom of God and pray for the church and pray for me. And remember, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And may God raise up amongst us a new generation of godly marriages.